welcome back for another episode on our leveling account. So I need to, uh, I think it was Mouse who sent me the message on my main account. I need to apologize. I have given the wrong information. Do you see what that is on my uh, feeder there? Yep, that's a ground bait cage. I don't know if this has changed, if it's changed multiple times. I think I used to know this and then I forgot again. But you can now own basic bottom rigs. And maybe you always could. I can't remember. I've gotten confused in my head. Uh, a lot has changed over the years. But you can now. Um, let's pick this up so I can show you. Instead of just putting the pair sinkers, you can now put the cages. Even on basic bottom. So you don't have to wait till Paternoster. Uh, that is my fault for, for not remembering that or noticing that. So what that means now is that we can make ground bait. Um, I don't think it tells you can you crush bullies from level one or real low? I guess you have to buy the bait grinder, which is going to be uh, expensive for a low level player, but that's interesting. Um, so we can make ground bait. Now let's see. What is required to make Crucian Gibble? All right, ground crackers, millet porridge, and sunflower oil. Ground crackers we can do. Millet porridge we can do. And sunflower oil we can do. Right? All right. So let's get, that comes with five portions. Um... do five of that and then ground crackers we'll do 10 of because we'll just make some plain stacks of ground crackers as well so we want to be careful not to spend too much on ground bait now let me see if I'm right about that we can actually do this yes okay so before I make any like I told you one reason why we're saving points is because when we start mixing ground bait I want to have higher quality. So of our three points, let's spend two on ground bait right now. And let's save that other point in case we want to increase the amount of stuff we're digging with the shovel. We also could put another point into fishing with a feeder rod for now. Okay. So now let's go to... Um, of course, you can make ground bait yourself. You can make your own recipes. If you've never made ground bait before, um, you can do it this way. And in fact, they now have it in the game where you can save the name of a recipe. And then it will, um, it's just easier to keep track of your different recipes. So, but let's go Crucian Gibble. Let's see if we can, we can make this now. Okay, we can now make Crucian Gibble. So this is awesome. I forget, so from the very first level, you can start putting stuff in your, uh, in your feeder rods to increase your bite rate. Um, Somebody just found our channel from the videos. That's awesome. So the other thing that I think is, is helpful to go ahead and mention about ground bait. Let's say we're wanting to fish for bream. Pearl barley, maggots, millet, porridge, anise oil. Pearl 
pearl barley, we need to remember, I mean, we don't have to remember this, we can always look, but we have to be 15% to do pearl barley. I'm not gonna be able to remember everything. Maggots, okay. So this is what I was wanting to get at. We can do maggots already. So if we wanted to make a basic ground bait with like crackers, but put maggots in there, it might help towards bream, even though it's not the full, um, even though it's not the full recipe, it still has some of the stuff that bream like in it, right? And then like with anise oil, let's see what we need to be for that. I think that one's farther on down, right? So that is at 30%. So it's a long time before you can do anise oil. And let me just check really quick and see what that last one was. I always, I, I, my memory guys, so millet porridge. So maggots and millet porridge, you know what that means is that we could make All right, maggots, let's get one thing of maggots. You can see how you can start going down the, um, one thing of millet porridge. Uh, the basics we can make, we can't use pearl barley yet. So do we think Bream would prefer semolina or crackers? Crackers is gonna be the safer option and we already have it. And then attractant, we can't do anise oil. We can do vanilla though. Sometimes Bream like vanilla, probably more than the other two options. So let's do one of vanilla. So let me show you how you do this. Ground bait, ground bait, let's do, um, we'll call it, um, we'll call it fake Bream, okay? And we're gonna do ground crackers maggots, millet porridge with a little vanilla. All right, now we save it, fake bream, okay? So then let's call up, I was trying to see if we could reset it. I can't remember if they have it now where it will bring it up. See, it's coming back to what the ingredients I had were, let's see. Let's take them all off and let's go to fake bream. It looks like it's not populating it. I really thought it did. Maybe all it does is name it still. Can't remember. So anyway, hopefully we'll succeed on this. So now we've got one stack of fake bream mix. All right, this is exciting. So we want another basic cage. Where you get your feeders is here. We're just doing these classic 30 gram, very small mesh feeders. Um, so let's put one on this one too. We're gonna put Crucian, Crucian Gribble mix on there. We still don't have a liter. 14 hook. We're gonna be fishing during the day, so we're gonna start with bread. Um, let's put, so I'd like to use one stack up at a time, and that's just for inventory purposes. Let's do a 14 hook on that with bread. We're gonna start with 14 and see how that goes. All right, and then 14 bread. The other thing I kind of want to do is start getting some of those nicer hooks. Again, I'm wanting to be careful on how much we spend here. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's wait a little bit. All right, cafe wise. What time is it in the day? It's 8, 11. I don't know that we'll get six rough in 12 hours. I'm gonna say we probably won't. Let's don't focus on specifically cafe orders for once. I wanna take these, um, I wanna take this ground bait and really kinda of go to a spot that 
I think is going to be a pretty active spot and just see how we can do just catching a high volume of fish on our ground bait. Man, this is so exciting. And I, again, apologize. I did not remember this from the start. So we're going to go back into this in one of these back spots. I think we're going to go slightly different location though. So this is where we have already showed you some spots. That's a good spot. But let's look at another one this time. I need to cross over the bridge up here, right? All right. So this has been a pretty decent spot. Um, let's do just like a just like a five meter clip. I mean, we really just want to cast just kind of right in front of us here. So I, I want to make sure it never goes too far. You could just take the clip off because we're going, casting so short, but. All right, let's see if we can start filling our net with some fish. I think we should be able to go about 80 meters in this spot. Let's see. Hold on. I'm not sure I want to fish from elevated position. Let's just go like right here. So we'll cast out about 60%. Yeah, that looks like that's going to sit well. All right, let me catch up what everybody's used saying over here. All right, let's see what we've got on here, folks. The hope is that we are gonna be able to, whoa. Do pretty well in this spot. Again, just in terms of volume. Trying to do some volume fishing here. We might need to adjust hook sizes some, we'll see. But let's just get started and see what the bite rate feels like. Um, one thing I meant to do was make some bread as well, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Mad Space Mouse in chat right now. He was the one that um, helped me remember about the uh, ground bait, being able to use it from a low level. I mean, that is a total game changer. Ground bait works really well. Plus, it just gets you motivated to start leveling up ground bait, even from the start. All right, that's a nice one there. All right, just as a reminder, what size hook are we using on this? 14. I mean, if anything, for the fish that we're going for, the species we're going for, 14 could be a little on the big side. Um, uh, 
uh, it's possible that the fish size will increase if we get a more appropriate hook side, but uh, I want to try, we're just going to try it with 14 straight across for right now. Oh shoot, let's see here. Yeah, it's going to mess with my brain constantly. The fact that we have... What I need to do is figure out a way to set it up like this. Or, I, or it's just not going to make sense to my brain. I have a weak brain. Alright, there we go. Now I'll have the, the right number in my head. Oh, there's already another fish on that feeder. It is a very cloudy day. All right, so we are, and we, I honestly, like, at this point, I do not mind catching small fish. Um, for sure, when you get markers, you're getting more on silver. But remember, the other thing we're focusing on doing is, A, getting silver, and B, just leveling up our skills. Um, don't worry about your character level. You're going to level up just fine in terms of your overall character level. But what we've got to do is make silver and also just level up skills. So that's that's why a spot like this, I think, is a good one because of the bite volume. And I think we might also catch some decent fish. The strategy here is we're going to go bread during the day, which I'm going to have to go mate some more. Maybe during the slow part of the afternoon, we'll go buy some bread, make some bread. Uh, and then we're going to go like more meaty baits at night. Kind of see how we do. And so far, I am very happy with the bite rate. I'm trying to keep one feeder sort of like a little closer to the shore and then put one a little farther out. But so far, it looks like both are working really well. And since we've got a good engine going, I do think we could probably afford to get a little higher quality hooks just so that we frustrate ourselves a little less on the um, on the float fishing. Let's increase our break a little bit here. I don't think we're going to hook into anything huge in this spot, but you never know. Um, I also want to thank someone and I just at right now off the top of my head I can't remember someone on one of my videos reminded me of this sometimes it's good on float fishing and it's been a while since I've done a low level account so I'd kind of forgotten about this trick but sometimes if you lift it not straight up but kind of to the side it will help you get the bites a little more consistently so see how we weren't straight up and down there it seems like that does help some. I have thought that in the past as well, and somebody reminded me of that strategy recently, and I definitely think it's worth doing or trying to do. So this is great. I mean, we are catching high volume of fish to level up skills burning through that ground bait, putting it to use. And we're also getting some markers. I mean, if you look at the weight here, we've gotten a couple of decent crucians so far. Let's see what else we can get catch here. So instead of like holding the float rod right over it, as you're lifting, kind of hold it to one side or the other. Let's see if you don't uh, get a little bit higher success rate on these catches. We got to get our premium float back on our float rod. That'll give us some better luck too, I think. Okay, see how we went to the side there? We got it hooked and now we're pulling it out. That's a nice little crucian. I like it. And now the feeder rods want some attention. Okay, it seems like a gibble. 
That is like, that is this feeder rod's job right now. It is just catching those undersized gibbles, isn't it? Ooh. Scary. It's a little scary, guys. But let's hang in there. Let's hang in there. That's why we're using small hooks. Hooks could be even smaller, though. So we're up to 16 fish already. It feels like we just got here, right? Ah, I went too early on that one. That's a nice gibble. There we go. That is a nice gibble. Set that hook, pull that fish out. Okay. This is a good opportunity to go get some uh, bread. So this is, um, coordinates wise, 4563. And uh, as you've seen, we're just sort of casting in between those lilies in that open water. And uh, this is a great spot if you're early still leveling at mosquito or even if you're above mosquito but looking for a good place to come try i think this is going to be a really nice spot what are we doing we're getting some bread we are getting some bread and we're saving up for a shovel among other things all right let's get um let's get four pieces of bread right now So now we can make it as we need it. Then I think our next, the next thing we might look at doing is, um, there's just no way around it. We're gonna have to spend a little bit of silver on hooks so that we can try different sizes and, and all that. Because when we're testing these spots, it'd be nice to be able to like, you know, give it a few minutes with one size hook and then try a different size. Whoa, now. What I need for you to not be is a common carp. If you want to be a tench, that's fine. If you want to be a trophy gibble or crucian, that's fine. It certainly got on the wrong feeder, didn't it? take all make sure nothing else is in the water uh, do we want to chase this down or do we want to call it so we 
lower our fi friction brake here. We're trying not to burn it up. Cause as little damage as possible. Um, it's okay if it pops off. I mean, there's a good chance we may not get this in either way. All right, so when you are walking a fish down like this, if you don't want to lose it, now if you don't care about losing it, then just hold shift and run and let slack in it and all that. But if you want to try to have a chance at it, as you're walking it down, you want to keep tension in the line. All right, fish got away. That is probably a blessing. Um, I think we should, especially on this feeder, I think we should look at going a little smaller hook. Probably on our float as well. We don't mind catching the gibbles and crucians, but if there are 18, see this is where I'd kind of like a 16 sort of right in between the two. But if there are um, common carp here, then we want our hook size to try to protect us as much as possible from, from the big boys. And that is also where, you know, like on this rig, maybe we would have had a chance. Did I not change the hook? I don't think I did. Maybe we would have had a chance on this rig. I don't know, but not on this, not on the spark. Our little spark was going to have a hard time. I mean, basically we were, oh, I did change it to 18. Okay. Um, we were going to have to hope, hope that, that that fish got tired really fast. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and throw an 18 on here. Even though these are cheap hooks, wouldn't be the end of the world if we lost it. Like, Let's just see what we're catching in this spot on um, on 18 hooks. I don't think it will change the quality of the gibbles and crucians and all that at all. So pretty much all crucian and gibbles with one roach and one tench right now. As it gets a little bit later, I'm going to start switching them over. We'll start with the left one. We'll switch the left one to, um, to worms and then we'll switch the other one. I think we'll try maggots. And um, if one of those stands out more than the other, then we'll use that on our float as well. I think this will give us 40 pieces of bread for a full loaf. No, 30. Okay. And we got that those all-important points in harvesting baits, which is really big. There's a little side pull. And that's a nice crucian. All right, when we hit this fish on the first feeder rod, we'll use that opportunity to change it to worms. that right out I think the other thing we might do is run up and see if there are any crucian and gibble orders that may end soon just to make sure we don't miss them if we've caught any of those orders pull that out twice Nice gibble.
Okay. All right, we're switching to worms. We'll stay on bread a little longer on this second one though. Bread's been doing so well. Is there a fish on? No. We just like pulled the line up or something. It's getting awfully shallow there. We might need to move that. So our first catch on worms here. Looks like a sleeper. Transition to sleepers, maybe. Nice. Gibble. Hoping we'd be able to see the fish, it's so shallow there, but mosquitoes, pretty dirty water. It's a nice crucian. All right, so let's go right out there. We pulled it out. Go check that cafe order before we get to night fishing here. Kind of want to try some of that fake bream. What was the uh, shovel cost? Was it 50 or 60, something like that? Oh, it's only 38. Okay, good. We want to get on that because I. Once we start digging, we won't have to buy worms anymore. All right, Gibble. These two, that's two silver. We might get the Chinese sleeper one. Crucian. That's 9.28 silver. And that's probably all we're gonna get. Unless we want to go for white bream off the dock for tonight. That is a nice order, but the chances of us getting that many 300, I don't know. Maybe with ground bait, we get a better bite rate on those whites. Definitely want to use like, what, 18 hooks. We could try it. Although I wanted to see what this spot was going to be like at night. Let's just see what this spot's going to be like for night. There are always going to be those nice rough or white green orders. And it's really nice to get that huge boost in silver. But this is fun. We're having fun over here. So let's keep doing it. So it's 1821. I want to stay on bread a little longer. When bread's this good, let's stay on it a little longer.
if it wasn't raining, I'd be more motivated to um, sell some fish and try to get that shovel. But we're going to be fighting energy so much in the rain, it, we're not going to be able to shovel much at all. So. Gotta watch our uh, stack of ground bait because it's gonna be. Um, we're gonna have to switch our ground bait out here shortly. Our stack. So, can you see on food? Yeah, see, I don't know that you can. Oh, yes, you can. Okay. It's a little pricey, but I think we want to go ahead and make some tea, right? Once we get the shovel, the other thing we want to do is start leveling cooking by getting some tea. Those things just work together well. And even though it costs a little bit, it's worth it to go ahead and start leveling that stuff up. And you'll be able to dig so much more if you stay on top of your energy with tea. Ooh, look what worms just brought in. All right, time to switch stacks. We don't want to use the fake bream. We want to use the Crucian Gibble mix. All right, and this is on bread. Most fish caught in the day. I'm telling you, this spot is active. And I'll say we're going to stay on bread on that feeder till it's actually nighttime. So like 2200, then we'll switch to maggots. So since we're not casting from straight on anymore, I think on both feeders, I'm going to increase it to six meter clip because I think ideally I want to just kind of land right out there. So a little farther out and that five meter clip I feel like is keeping us from, which one's got a fish on? I think this one does. All right, so let's go six meter clip. And again, just sort of straight out there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I think that'll be nice. Feels so good when you actually land a, ro a fish on on a float after missing them so much. We'll 
switch this to cl six meter clip. And again, we're gonna start casting it just a little farther. So our float fishing is still above our bottom fishing, but it won't be for long. It will not be for long. That fish is up on the shore over there. Little roach. What time is it? All right, one more bread. One more bread fish and then we'll be on worms and maggots. Let's see how those look here. Worms has already been looking good. That sleeper. All right, last fish on bread for a while. Let's see how maggots do here. Start off with worms. You know, I guess what we could do with the storm, we are near the campfire. We could warm ourselves or raise our comfort by the campfire. I think that works. If you stand there for a little bit. Oh, we have to have a teapot or something to make the tea, don't we? Look at that tench on maggots. Is that a roach? Gibble.
That's a nice one. Is that a rough? Cute. We caught a rough. Oh, the roughs. We find another rough spot? Maybe. They seem to be here. This is exciting. This is really exciting to have rough here as well. Nice gibble on float. Ooh, the big boys are coming out. Oh, yeah. Man, all the juicy gibbles got together and went out as a team I'm telling you holy cow These gibbles and stuff are amazing here right now. That's a uh, Chinese sleeper. It's almost like we're flirting with the possibility of getting a trophy here. I really want to... Um, Get that different float. But guys, we have been on a streak here. These gibbles, wow. I guess I don't want to leave. It's too good right now. 
but I do want to get a higher quality hook and also a different float. So worm and maggots at night is what's doing this, huh? The bite rate during the day was great, but the size has definitely gone up significantly at night. Might be a while before we catch this many fish in a small amount of time and the weight's going to add up to a lot too I wish I could say it's all because of the ground bait, but truthfully, I think this spot is just really good right now. Woo! Guys? That is getting up there. Uh, I know I'm committed to having this third uh, float rod out, but when the fishing's like this, you want to have all three feeders in. We're not going to do that for now on this account, but truthfully, if you, if you like bottom fishing like I do, and you find a spot like this, put all three feeders in and just kill them. One point eight five. That's getting up there, and that's that's without like a fluorocarbon leader or anything. I mean, that's great. The only reason why I want to go to Old Berg, I need to check it winding. The only reason why I want to go to Old Berg a little bit is to see if they have leaders in stock. Because that's the next step is putting on fluorocarbon leaders to increase the chance of um, bites. And I think it also can increase the chance of trophies in my experience. Dang it. Um, just because those fluorocarbon leaders are so invisible to the fish, it's just like, it's really nice. Dried fish. What do you need? I think you need salt. So we can do dried roach. They have to be between 300 and 600. So they have to be pretty nice roach. We probably don't want to do that. have to light the fire to see what we can do with that. I think all of our cooking at this point mostly is going to be on um, on the campfire. Let's 
slowed down a little bit, hadn't it? Who knows, the rain may have also helped. Cool temperatures, rain. And this spot just seems to be really nice right now. Don't be afraid to recast your rods. If you saw what we just did, like, you know, that ground bait had been sitting there for a minute, hadn't gotten a bite. We're used to having pretty good bite rate in this spot. So let's just recast them and see if we can't get it going again. You lose a piece of ground bait, but ground bait is very cheap, and you need to make lots of it anyway to level up, so don't worry about that. just under an hour I went too fast. Went too fast on that. All right, let's try something here. Just for a minute. Actually, I think we... Let's do a 20 meter clip. Let's put our fake bream on. We could have cast farther than that, I think. And let's go to 14 worm fake bream pickup. 20 meters. Does this look right? Something like that. I don't know if it quite made it on either one, but it's close. Okay. Let's just do a little test there while we're finishing up. We're going to look at cafe orders, sell our fish. At next episode, we're going to start fresh on fish. Um... So that's another great spot we now know about, especially if we get cafe orders for like really the larger gibbles, maybe even the larger crucians. Um, we know to go check that. Just trying to see. It's 29 hours left on this easy white bream, easier white bream order. That's pretty nice. All right, so we want to do these three, four, seven silver. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and eat. And let's sell all the fish. Let's look by price. 
the rough is worth the most, guys. <laughs> Followed by that fat gibble. But we just caught so many fish. It's 48 silver, mostly from volume fishing. That's a lot of nice silver for us at this level. Plus all the cafe orders we filled, which weren't the best cafe orders, but they were fine. They were fine, fine, fine. All right, so we're at 90 silver. I've got some figuring to do. Next episode, I want to try to focus on... This episode, we started off by focusing on how to make and use ground bait. I will talk more about ground bait as the series moves, series moves on, but I wanted to give you at least an introduction. Next episode, I think I want to start off by focusing on how to... Um, use the shovel and make tea because those two go together so well so if we have enough silver to get everything i need to do those two things that might be what we look at for next episode well we've had these out for about an in-game hour or almost um doesn't look like we got any bites on this spot for the bream i mean you basically can just kind of check check the different holes here at Mosquito. Um, I'd say the spots that I've caught them the most are either from this beach down towards this five meter hole or from the dock towards that five meter hole. But I know there's other spots too. Those are just the ones that have happened to have been pretty, pretty hot in the past for me. All right, as always, thanks for watching. And um, thanks again for, I think, Mouse for that reminder about the ground bait. I'm so glad that you pointed that out because using ground bait, I think, is one of the most fun parts of the game to go with bottom fishing. So I'm really glad we're on that tra train now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.